Have you ever wondered how laws are created in Colorado? Where do ideas for laws originate? How does the process work? Let's start from the beginning and work our way through. At the end, you'll be a civics pro. It all starts with the Colorado Constitution. Article 3 of the Colorado Constitution designates three separate and distinct branches of government. The executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. The General Assembly is the entity where bills are written, debated, and voted on to become law. The Colorado General Assembly has two chambers, the House of Representatives and the Senate. The House has 65 members and the Senate has 35, for a total of 100 members. The General Assembly is guided by the state constitution to meet 120 consecutive days, beginning no later than the second Wednesday in January. Historically, the General Assembly considers fewer than 1,000 bills, resolutions, and memorials during a legislative session. However, there are other ways to create laws in Colorado other than the General Assembly passing a bill into law. A law can also be created through the initiative process, where citizens circulate and sign petitions to place an issue on the ballot so Colorado voters can directly approve or reject an idea. The General Assembly can also refer a bill to the voters at a general election. If the voters approve, the bill becomes a law. This is called a referendum. But where do bills originate? Where do the ideas that become bills come from? Ideas for laws can come from anywhere. Cities, counties, state agencies, businesses, organizations, special interest groups, and individual citizens. If a legislator is approached with an idea, he or she can decide to sponsor that idea and request a bill be drafted by the Office of Legislative Legal Services. Every bill must have a prime sponsor from each chamber before a draft bill can be created. Once the initial sponsor approves the draft bill, the bill is delivered to either the House or Senate to be introduced. When a bill is introduced, it is assigned a bill number and assigned to a committee for public hearing. The title is read aloud by the reading clerk. This constitutes the first reading of the bill. Committees usually focus on particular issues such as education, transportation, or public health. Each committee must hold a public hearing on every bill assigned to it. When a committee meets, the sponsor will explain the bill. Anyone from the community can attend this meeting to voice their support, express concerns, or suggest changes. However, only committee members may offer an amendment that the committee can act on. A committee can then do several different things. It may recommend the bill with or without amendments. It can postpone the bill indefinitely, essentially killing the bill. It can hold the bill over for another hearing in the same committee, or it can refer the bill to another committee with or without amendments. A committee report is then issued that formalizes the committee's activity. Bills that are favorably recommended are then placed on the calendar for consideration on second reading with any accompanying committee reports. The second reading of a bill involves the entire chamber forming a committee of the whole, or COW, and there are no time limits on debate. Here, members debate the merits of the bill and may offer amendments. A voice vote is usually all that is required for approval, with the appointed chairperson of the COW determining the fate of the bill. However, a member may request a division vote where members must stand in support or opposition of the bill. If the bill is approved, then the bill and any approved amendments are combined into a new document that is called an engrossed bill. That bill is then placed on the calendar for third reading. Third reading is where the final debate and recorded vote on the bill occurs. If the bill is approved by recorded vote, the engrossed bill and any approved third reading amendments are then combined into a re-engrossed bill. The bill then goes to the other chamber, where the same process starts all over again. When and if the second chamber approves the bill on second reading, it then becomes a revised bill. If the bill makes it all the way through the third reading in the second chamber, it becomes a re-revised bill and is sent back to the first chamber, where any amendments made by the other chamber must be approved. Are you confused yet? If the bill passes through both chambers without any changes, or if the first chamber accepts the changes made by the second chamber, it is sent to the governor for action. If the first chamber rejects any amendments made by the second chamber, the sponsor can ask for a conference committee, which is made up of three members from each chamber. These individuals then try to iron out the differences between the two chambers and reach an agreement. If they can reach an agreement, then a report that contains the conference committee's suggestions is issued. If both chambers adopt the report, then the bill is sent to the governor for his or her action. The governor then has three options once their office receives a bill. The governor can sign the bill into law, he or she can veto the bill, or he or she can let the bill become law without their signature. A bill becomes law without the governor's signature after 10 days if he or she receives the bill during the legislative session, or after 30 days if he or she receives the bill after the General Assembly has adjourned. If 
the governor vetoes the bill before the General Assembly adjourns, it goes back to the General Assembly for more consideration. If a bill can be approved by two-thirds of the members in each chamber, the veto is overridden and the bill becomes a law. Vetoes occurring after the General Assembly adjourns are final. So that's it. That's how a bill becomes a law in Colorado. There are tools that can help you follow the process. The calendar, journal, and status sheet are ways to track bills and see when debates will occur. All of these documents and more are available online at the General Assembly's website, and additional information is available at the Colorado Channel website. Thanks for watching, and we hope that this program will help you become more informed about making law in Colorado.